Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at printing a temperature calibration tower. Now, I've headed over to Thingiverse and found uh, this particular set of temperature towers as well as the needed uh, plug-in for uh, uh, Cura. So what I'm going to show you is a couple different things. So what do you get in this uh, file? So we have several different towers and all these are different starting temperatures. So you'll need to download all these files here. Now I've already done that and uh, I have the files over here and one of the uh, most important things you'll need to note is this very temp with height dot py. So this is a Python file and this is going to be the um, the plugin we're going to use to adjust the temperature uh, for the towers themselves. So how do you install this? Well let's take a quick look at this now. This does run in Cura so you're going to have to use uh, Cura for this. And so I've got Cura started and as you see here I've in the plugin tab Acura. Now, where do you put the plugin? That's a good question. Let's take a quick look. So, when we go to Acura and we click Open Plugin Location, you notice it opens up Explorer. And so we have Local Disk, Program Files x86, Cura, I'm using 15.04.6, and the plugin file. And you see now here I've uh, taken and I've copied that from my uh, expanded zip file that I've downloaded from Thingiverse and placed here. Now you will have to restart Cura for this to appear uh, once you've copied it over. Now once you copy it over, be very careful because one of the things, um, Cura doesn't like to push the screen over so you may see this and think okay uh, it just works by itself but it really doesn't. What you have to do is actually go over here and set a couple uh, real quick parameters. Now because we're utilizing the uh, 240 uh, max uh, temperature tower we have to set the initial nozzle temperature at 240 so what it will do is work from hottest to coldest and kind of the concept here is you don't want to go coldest to hottest because you know you may hit a point at time which extrusion won't happen so you want to pick a number where it's going to be you know above the top end of the extrusion now I'm going to experiment with the rigid ink PLA plus filament and one of the things it says is it's got an operating temperature between about 230 and 240 and 240 being its top upper side so that's why I've chosen this now one of the other pieces here and this is the the next two are pretty much standard default so uh, adjust the, each time the temperature changes by 10 so basically every 10 millimeters we're going to change by 4 degrees and each one of these marks over here that you see are you know 10 millimeters so so it goes 10 changes, goes 10 changes, etc. So, so you get this all set up. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do according to the um, uh, uh, instructions, and I'll get it straight here, because I think I want to change this to three and make it print quicker, uh, is you want to go with a single shell. So I've gone with 0.4, I have a 0.4 nozzle, and you want to do zero infill. So you just want this to be, um, you know, a hollow uh, cube. And so um, that way you'll see the, the bandings better. Um, so I've left it at a bed temperature of um, uh, 60, and I'm going to set this at a start, but what will happen is the um, uh, plugging code will actually override this temp 240 temperature setting but I'm going to set this at my base temperature setting so it's rather simple and I've got a rather fast computer that I'm running this on so it's already done all the calculations now one of the other uh, pieces here I'm gonna kind of warn you about if you go to slice another model if you don't kill this uh, by clicking it it's going to run this again so what I want to do is uh, you know click this to run this again and then I'm just going to put in my 240 and leave the other numbers the same but this doesn't go away between um, you know clearing the platform so be a little careful of this and also notice this message down here let's um, down here at the bottom warning one plug-in from previous session is still active so that's what that means is this plug-in is still ready to go 
So anyways, uh, we've got this set up. I'm doing 0.3 layer height. I'm doing shell thickness of 0.4, so one shell thick. Um, I'm going to do a bottom thickness. Uh, actually, as I let's go back here. Uh, thing details what it suggests. So the one thing to note when uh, creating this, uh, the uh, creator up here, Karag777, uh, shares with us, use a single wall, zero infill, and no top. Cure plugin will set the M14 code to adjust extruder, extruder temperatures to match the markings. Um, and no top. Well, let's see what let's see what happens with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do? So I'm going to save out the G code now, and uh, I'm going to print this on the Mono Price Select Mini. And so I've got my G code, my temperature tower 240 G code save, and so now I've saved my code out. So let's head over, take a look at a time lapse and see how this goes. And then we'll meet back at the bench and take a closer look at uh, what temperature this filament prints best at. Welcome back. So we're at the bench and I've printed off a couple of these to just uh, see consistency and that kind of stuff. Um, it has come out rather interesting. So um, uh, again, once it hit the top, you can kind of see the, uh, um, you know, how it uh, stopped actually extruding. It got to actually too cold to even attempt to really finish the top. As you can see here, now one of the things is I, I look at this, um, you know, the idea is is to kind of look at it and see where the sweet spot is uh, in in the uh, temperature banding. And again, once you find the sweet spot, that tells you where, you know, obviously that filament's best to print on that machine. Now I do think this is a little bit machine specific because there are certain quirks in each machine's temperature consistency and things like that. So I did this on the Monoprice Mini, uh, Monoprice Select Mini. I'll spit that out. And this is the Rigid Ink um, PLA Plus. So now it says that you should print between about 230 and 240. And uh, as you can see here, I went all the way down from approximately 200, which was which was too cold, um, all the way up to 240, which 240 was a bit too warm because I did get a lot of compression in the um, uh, in in the layers there. At, at first, when I looked at it, I thought 224 was about the sweet spot when looking at this. However, what I did is I put this under the USB microscope and took a little bit closer look. And what I determined was uh, actually a, a temperature range probably closer to about 230, 228 to 230 uh, on the amount of price was a little bit better. So, uh, because again, I've put the higher one up around 236, and you notice there's some separation in the in the characters, as well as about 224. So somewhere between about 224 and 236 seemed to be the rough sweet spot for this, even though kind of looking at it, I was thinking, you know, closer to the 228, 224 was um, the sweet spot. So that was kind of the nice thing about putting it underneath there. One of the things, if you guys know, because the, the USB microscope is really nothing more than, um, a, you know, a USB webcam with a, you know, a, a macro lens on it. I, I'm looking for an application that allows me to do, you know, uh, to do measurements with it. Uh, for example, I would actually have liked to have measured the compression of the striations or the layer heights in in the build uh, and you can actually do that because you know there's you know the pixels of the um, actual camera itself and so you know that so many pixels equals so much and I've seen uh, and I've used other astronomical programs actually that allow you to do astronomy um, 
uh, um, astrometrics, um, I forget the name of it anyways, uh, because you just simply tell it um, the size of the pixels and uh, you know it, it'll tell you the arc distance of a star and you can do all kinds of measurements. So I'm wondering if there's something like that that, that does this in a simplified sense um, uh, that I could use this camera for because one of the things you can see the um, and again, I'll overlay the image. Uh, you can see the differences in the layer height, um, you know, with temperature. And it would be kind of nice to measure it to find out exactly which one of these, you know, is 0.3 or closest to 0.3 at what temperature. And that would really be useful. Um, so anyways, looking for an application along that size. Maybe it's something I just have to find the time somehow to write myself. Uh, because again, it, it shouldn't be too difficult. So anyways, um, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. So, uh, you know, I kind of like this, especially, you know, working with different filaments. You know, most of this stuff with PLAs, you know, around, you know, 200, 205. I don't know, at least for me, seemed to have worked well. And around 230, 235 for ABS. And uh, I've been a happy camper. However, with this PLA Plus, it's a little bit more unique, and it was kind of nice, kind you know, being able to find its uh, real sweet spot because I, I do like this um, Rigid Ink PLA Plus. I, again, if I had a part shop where I was doing one-off part, you know, parts or uh, demo parts for a customer, I, I think I would definitely use this material. I do like its finished properties over just cheap PLA. Uh, I have to say that. Is it really more resilient, I think, than ABS? It's probably not as resilient as ABS, but it probably is a little bit better than PLA. So, anyways, hopefully you found this all interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. you got questions, hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more coming, and hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Hello, and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.